In this video, I'm going to show you how to bring in analog signals to the microcontroller on two different channels of the analog to digital converter. So you can convert channel one, and in this case, I'm converting channel four as well. And I'm using potentiometers to show an analog signal coming into the microcontroller. The conversions for the analog to digital converter will be done through interrupts, and you will see that the conversions are listed as ADC1 and ADC4. So if I change the ADC1, which is the channel 1, you can see that the channel 1 does change, and the channel 4 changes independently of channel 1. I am only using these potentiometers in place of what would normally be used on these ADC channels such as sensors. Another example would be having a completely different type of sensor here like a, a temperature sensor and maybe a sensor over here would be measuring the voltage of some part of a circuit or a pressure sensor or something like that. In most circumstances you'll need to use more than one channel on the ADC to bring in many sensors. So you're going to need to know how to receive those values from each channel separately. So let's go ahead and set up this circuit and go into the code. Oh, and I also added resistors here instead of just straight wires on one of them to show you at the low end how it affects the value and on the high end how it affects the value. It doesn't go all the way up to 4095 and it doesn't go all the way down to zero because there's resistance on each side of this. So it's as if this isn't getting the entire range of the voltage from the power rails. I would recommend putting small resistor values on either end so you're not putting the pin directly to the, the voltage extremes. Okay, so let's set up the circuit and then let's see how we can accomplish this with code. Let's see what pins we'll need to use to access the channels for the analog to digital converter. Okay, we're currently using PA1, which is channel 1, ADC IN1, that's on pin number 15. And because my potentiometer is so large, I need to go a few tie strips over. I don't want to use the F because that's not the ADC. So I'm going to use the ADC IN4, which is the channel 4, and that's on pin number 20. So let's put one of the potentiometers on pin number 15, which is the ADC channel 1. Connect the two outer leads of the potentiometer to the plus and the minus rail. The other potentiometer to channel 4 of the ADC. And on this potentiometer, I'll be adding resistors to the power rail. Okay, let's start coding. The first thing we need to make sure is that we have the correct libraries installed or added to this project. I'm using the previous project on the interrupts. So I already have the adc.h and the lcd functions.h added to this project from their respective projects. If any of the code in this video seems foreign to you, like loading the header files or creating a new project or the code that went into making the lcd functions and the adc.h libraries, please see the prerequisites in the description to find the videos or playlists that explain these in detail. The first thing we want to make sure is that the, the header files are loaded within the skeleton code. And we have the STM32F0, and that is the register definitions for the microcontroller that we're using. The LCD functions.h is allowing us to display characters on the, fun on the LCD and the adc.h has all of the code that we use for initializing the ADC. So the next thing we want to do is initialize all of the, the features that we're using, the ADC and the LCD. And we want to set up the LCD display. And if I want to put something on the LCD that explains what we're going to be showing. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to use the function that we created called send two lines, which allows us to do to put two lines of information on the LCD all in one function. This doesn't need to happen in the while loop because we only need it to display once on the LCD. Once it's displayed, it'll stay there. So I'll show the ADC1 on the first line and ADC4 on the second line. And I'm calling it 4 because I'm using channel 4 and that just indicates to me that the number next to it is going to be the channel 4. 
Now let's do the initialization for the ADC. And I want to invoke the interrupt mode. And we have a special function for that. And the channel select that was created in the ADC tutorial, I can select channel one. And because I'm ORing this, the channel select is using the OR bitwise operation. I can go ahead and use the same function to set up channel four as well. So this tells the microcontroller that I want to use channel four and channel one as channels to receive analog information. And then I can go ahead and start the ADC. Since we're using interrupts for the ADC, it's going to go to a separate function because it's not going to be polling within the while loop. Let's set up that function now. The specific ADC function has to be called ADC1 IRQ handler. And we're not bringing anything in. So when the interrupt so when the ADC has completed a conversion, it will jump right into this handler. And one thing to note is that we're using, within the interrupt mode, we're using the interrupt end of conversion, i.e. interrupt enable, end of conversion. That will end each conversion of each channel. So it will come into this function when each of the channels are converted. So while the my controller is running. When it's converted channel one, it'll go into this handler and run the code within it. And then when it's complete, it'll go back to the while loop. And when channel two is completed converting, it'll go back to the handler and then run the code. And as far as I know, there is nothing in the microcontroller registers that gives us a status of which channel it has converted. So we are going to introduce a new variable that tells us which channel it is on. So I'm going to introduce a new integer to the program called channel. And this will tell me which channel it is currently on. The channels will be converted in order of channel, the, few, the smallest channel to the largest channel, like channel one, two, three, four. So it'll do it in that order as it is converting. Unless you change the scan direction. The scan direction is in the configuration register, CFGR1, and the scan direction is on bit number two. So the scan direction bit means that up, upward scan from channel zero to channel 17, it'll scan in that direction. If you set it to one, then it will backward scan from 17 to zero. In this case, we're gonna keep it as an upward scan, and that is the default, it's zero. So we don't need to change that register. So within this function, we want to increment the channel variable by one. But when it gets here, it'll, this channel, since it's zero, the first time it comes in here, it'll be one. So we want to first grab the data from the, from the ADC. And you could be tempted to actually show the, the ADC data on the LCD within this function. But the problem with that is the, the LCD, the LCD uh, functions and putting things onto that display takes a long time. And it takes so long in microcontroller terms, not human terms, that many of these conversions, many of the ADC conversions will have already happened by the time it puts one set of information on the LCD. So we wanna just grab the data and then display the information within our while loop. So let's go ahead and grab the data. And we're gonna have to create another volatile integer for channel one data. And we'll do the same thing for the channel four. So if, if the channel is currently at zero, then let's grab channel one data and it will equal ADC1 DR, the data register. We're gonna do the same thing to channel one. If it gets to channel one, we're gonna get the channel four data. And the reason why we're incrementing one 
is because we're only setting channel 1 and channel 4. If we had something in between this, like channel 3, even if it was channel 3 was after channel 4, it'll still get it in sequence of channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4. But if we only have it set up to do channel 1 and channel 4, it'll only want to get channel 1 or channel 4. It's not going to try to receive the channel 2 or convert the channel 2 or, and convert channel 3. It will only convert these two. So when it comes into the function for the handler, it'll start out with the first one being channel 1. The next time it comes over here to the function, the handler function, it'll receive the channel 4 conversion. This is only a variable, the channel variable is only a variable to determine what data is picked up at what time it gets to the handler. Now in the handler, the channel keeps incrementing upwards. So I'm going to add another condition. And I want it to do it before these conditions because I want it to grab zero or one. If the channel is equal to two, then I want it to start over. So, cause it's going to, after it does one, it's gonna add increment the channel again and it will be two. So the next time it comes over here, it'll be two, but I want it to be zero. So really it's just toggling between zero and one. So I think we're finished with the handler function. Now we can display the data in the while loop. So we have in line one, ADC one, and line two, ADC four. So let's go ahead and set the cursor location. And this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six, sixth position on the line. And we'll start out with, uh, with line number zero. And we're gonna send an integer. And the integer is going to be channel one, channel one data. And I'll have, I'll give it five, five maximum digits. And we'll do the same thing for channel two data. We'll go to line number one and we'll just show channel four data. So it's constantly putting the information to the screen, but it's doing probably a lot more conversions before it actually gets to the screen. So you're still going to see it very quickly, but the proper data should go into the right place on the on the LCD. So let's do a build and see if it works. Looks like there are no errors, so that's a good that's a good thing. So let's go ahead and flash the microcontroller and see if it works. Okay, the microcontroller was flashed. You can see we have ADC1 on the first line showing a number, a value, and ADC4 on the second line showing a value. And if I change the first channel or the first potentiometer, you can see that the first ADC changes its value. And if I go to the next potentiometer, you can see that that also changes its value. One thing I did actually didn't realize I did when I was putting the circuit together was I, I switched the leads to its negative and positive value. So the rotation that I use to turn it is actually It goes in the opposite direction that I would think it does. So you can just change these leads. Like this one, this lead would have to go to the negative and this one would go to the positive to get a an intuitive rotation compared to the value of the, the ADC on the LCD. Okay, that is how to use two channels with the ADC interrupt. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching. I've given you a tiny bit of knowledge. Because I'm doing this for peanuts, you can show your support by clicking the like button. Go ahead, you can do it, click it, go ahead. And also by subscribing and clicking on the notifications. Oh look, I've made it to 1.1 million. Oh no, that's not me. Oh yeah, and go to my channel where you can find all of the playlists.